Hey, what's up? It's Chris from Rooker Films, and in today's video, I'm going to show you the many different blending option settings right inside of Adobe Photoshop. But before we get into that, I first just need to isolate this person from the background so I can show you all of the powerful effects inside of the blending option setting. So I'm just gonna start by getting the polygonal lasso tool, that is this tool over here. And I'm just gonna draw a very quick and extremely rough mask around myself in this image. So as you can see, I'm clearly overlapping myself. This is really bad, this is really rough. But don't worry about that for now because I'm only doing this to show you the blending options. So with that mask selected, I'm gonna hold Command C to copy and press Command V to paste. And if we isolate the background, there we go. We've got this really, really rough copied layer of myself with the background isolated. So let's turn the background layer back on for now. We'll go into layer one, right click, go up to blending options. Now inside of blending options, we've got all of these different settings. So we've got styles. And of course that's gonna add many different styles and presets to our photo. All of this is really ugly. We just don't want this. So let's come out of that. Let's deselect the styles and we'll go into blending options. Now blending options is where we can change the blending mode. So because I've got a white hoodie on, if I change the blending mode from normal to multiply, that should get rid of anything white within the frame. So if there was something behind the white hoodie, then that would shine through with the multiply blending mode selected. If I had something black and selected screen, that would do the same if there was anything behind the black trousers, then you would see that come through. And then of course, there's many different blending modes here. They all do something completely different. So feel free to go through and explore all of these different blending options in your own time. Of course, we have the opacity of the clip. We have the fill opacity and the rest of this doesn't really matter for now. Moving on, we've got bevel and emboss and bevel and emboss is basically adding an edge to the photo. So if we increase the depth of this, you can see this getting deeper and deeper. We can move down to size, we can increase the size and the size of the bevel, so that is this angle, the edge around here, that will increase if we pull the size up. Of course, we can soften this up if we wanted to have a really smooth bevel or we can pull that down. Then just down here, we've got some shading so we can change the angle, the contour and the color and opacity. But let's turn that off for now and we'll move down to stroke. Stroke is probably one of the most desired tools when it comes to making YouTube thumbnails because this is what gives you the outline around the person. So if we increase the size of the stroke, you can see this outline of that mask that we just created is now starting to pop out. And of course we can change the color of the mask by just selecting the color box and selecting a color of your choice. So when you're making a YouTube thumbnail, you might make a mask around somebody, add the stroke and then add your title over here on the left maybe. Moving down to inner shadow. This is a shadow, as you can see, this is just inside of that mask. Of course, we can change the blending mode. We can change the opacity, we can change the angle, we can change the distance, choke, size. This is just basically adding a little bit of shadow. Turn that off, down to inner glow. Inner glow is exactly what it sounds like. It's adding a little bit of glow and we can increase this, we can decrease this, we can change the blending mode of this. All of these settings are really awesome and really powerful. Next we have satin. We can change the blending mode of this one as well. Moving down, we've got color overlay and this is basically going to fill that mask that we just created with a solid color. And if you want to change this to red, then all you have to do is select red pink, go through all of the colors and change the fill color to whatever you like. Moving down is gradient overlay and this is very similar to the color overlay but rather than overlaying the mask with one color it's going to give you the option to create a gradient. So you can select one of these presets or if you prefer you can just add one of your own colors. So we've got blue and we've got pink. That looks really cool. But we'll get rid of gradient overlay and we'll move down to pattern overlay. And this again is exactly how it sounds. If we go into pattern, we can change the pattern that we have selected. So we've got lines, we've got squares, we've got dots, 
We've got this really cool pattern. We've got this blue thing. It looks really awesome. Let's say we'll select the diagonal lines and we select the blending mode to multiply. Because multiply removes the white, we've just got this black grid effect happening on top of the photo. And of course we can scale this up, we can scale this down. This is completely up to you. Moving on to outer glow. This is very similar to inner glow. This is just gonna add a little bit of glow to your photo. So as you can see, if we increase the size and we've got a lot of glow, we can decrease the opacity, increase the opacity, change the blending mode. It's completely up to you. And then the last setting inside of the blending modes tab is the drop shadow. And this is one of those really powerful tools that is really used a lot. So drop shadow is basically going to add a little bit of a shadow just on the outside of the mask. So we'll increase the opacity up to 100, change the angle, increase the distance, if we increase the spread, then we're going to remove the softness, so it's going to be a nice hard edge. We can increase the size of this. And then, of course, we're going to add some contouring to this just to kind of change the shape of it. The drop shadow effect is really awesome when you drop this behind text or objects. And again, this is another one that's very popular with YouTube thumbnails. And there you go. Those are all of the settings and all of the tabs right inside of the layer style window, right inside of Adobe Photoshop. Going through each individual setting will give you a different look and a different effect to your photo. So feel free to go through Photoshop, go through all of these different settings and take the time to learn what each individual setting does and how it affects your photo. And there you go. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you tomorrow for another brand new video. See you then.